Hello, I'm Felicity Cohen. I'm so excited to introduce you to my Wellness Warriors podcast. For over 20 years, I've been a passionate advocate for helping thousands of Australians find solutions to treating obesity and health-related complications through surgical intervention and holistic managed care. My podcast is dedicated to all the people, past, present and future, who have helped shape my journey and continue to inspire me to work consistently to achieve a healthier Australia in both adults and future generations. I hope you enjoy it. One of the things that I'm really excited to bring to our audience with the Wellness Warriors podcast is the opportunity to talk to a diverse group of people about so many different things that are associated with wellness. And today, my special guest is Chef Mark Normoyle. Welcome to the Wellness Warriors podcast. Thank you, Felicity. Um, So Mark, I've had the pleasure of getting to know um, in your role as a chef and working with us here at Weight Loss Solutions Australia, designing food for bariatric patients and really taking you away from what you would normally do in your everyday world as a chef um, to get involved in what's important with bariatric patients. And that's something I'd like to chat about later on in our conversation today. Um, So I guess, first of all, you know, you've had three decades of experience working in the industry that's associated with all to do with chefs and food Mm. and um, you know 16 years as head chef at the RACV club in Melbourne. I'd really love to hear from you first of all a little bit about how you've seen food change over that whole period of time in Australia. It must be massive in terms of change. Yeah, very much so, Felicity. I think in the last 30 years, we've seen a lot of the consumer is is more savvy than they ever have been. So they want to know more about the produce they're eating. They want to know that it's where it's coming from. They want to know what's in season. They want to know how it's made, how it's prepared. Um, And there seems to be a trend now, I think, where people tend to want less processed food, which is amazing. So in the past, when I first started cooking, there's a lot of processed foods around and the average consumer didn't know. They didn't care about it. As long as it tasted great, that was good enough. And, and I think the latest trend in the last 10 years is definitely catering for um, vegetarian and vegan style cooking. So protein is really important and we've always been big meat eaters in Australia, but now the portion sizes of the meat are slightly reducing, which is great. But the rest of the plate is being um, put on with beautiful vegetables, beautiful lentils, beautiful rice, beautiful pasta and that sort of thing. So I think that's a bit of a trend. Um, and one thing which I'm really pleased to see is just portion size getting smaller. Um, sharing meals is really is is big big trend now so I think that's great for people to have smaller portions as well instead of having one big plate themselves so that's a big trend and I think and also with our international flair we have in Australia with different cultures coming all the time so chefs are also learning about how to use some of the great ingredients from other countries as well so flavors from Korea which we never had years ago flavors from Spain which we we didn't have so we had a very Western style cuisine um, but now we're mixing and fusing all these beautiful flavors from around the world. And a lot of the cuisines overseas don't use processed foods. So it's all about what's in season, what's fresh, what, how you can make a beautiful fresh pasta, which only takes like flour, eggs, and a little bit of oil. So it's all about fresh food. And that's, that's what I think the trend is coming now, which is great. So before we talk about, you know, portion sizes reducing, which is actually fantastic. Mm. If that is the current trend, I'm so excited to hear that. Yep. But prior to that, there's been a whole big, I think, um, culture around the upsizing mentality that our plates were getting too big, that we couldn't even fit them in the dishwashers anymore, and that people were being valued by portion sizes increasing. Was that a demand on you as a chef that you had to actually, that the customer wanted something to be satisfied and to feel as though they had value for money, that the portion had to be bigger? What did that look like? Look, and you hit the nail on the head there. It was that perception of value for money. But I think as the customer gets more knowledge and as the customer learns about food as well, um, savvy customers these days, and even in in the smaller uh, retail uh, outlets, the restaurants out in the suburbs, most consumers now would have rather have quality over quantity, which is great. Um, there's still plates out there doing you know, big plates with chips and all the rest of it on there. But most people now would rather spend their money on a really good quality, a smaller piece of fish or smaller piece of steak and a beautiful salad than having you know, a big plate of mashed potato and a big, big plate of chips on there as well. So um, I think the customers are just learning um, 
Instagram is great because people see different types of food on there, so they can see what's in, on trend. So, and a lot of the restaurants out there actually driving this as well now. So, but it does come from the customers in the first place. So they're the ones saying, you know, we want healthier style food. We still want to be able to eat out, but we don't want a lot of fatty, a lot of salty food as well. So it's actually making chefs get smarter with how they produce food as well. I love that that's a trend. And if mm. that's where we're heading and our yep. portions are reducing, yep. that's really where we need to be from a health perspective, yep. um, that we're not over consuming. Um, in general, you know, I that totally portion, agree. you know, I think that's so important. Tell me about what you've seen in terms of the fast food industry because, you know, um, I went to, I think I was telling you when we were having dinner together just recently that I went to a suburb in Brisbane where I felt like within a radius of 50 metres mm. there was every single fast food outlet. Yeah, true. Convenience has become a big issue. You know, if you're talking about, um, you know, husband and wife both working, yeah. um, trying to sort of manage work-life balance and fitting yeah. in how does that work and fast food obviously has grown yeah. and grown and grown. Very much so. Do you think that that industry um, is that competing with where are we where are we sitting now with fast yeah. food and yeah. the fact that the drive through is so easy true, and that true. convenience is easy um, you know you can and I think this is a big problem for me is that not only can you drive through wherever you want to pick it up but you can also dial up yes. and have it delivered. What you, what's your view on that sector? Yeah, of look, that's a really good point, Felicity. And I suppose if you think about the fast food, fast food side of it, you have to look at places like McDonald's now. They, they, they're getting smarter and smarter all the time. So they never had water in McDonald's years ago, where well, they do now. Yeah. Um, they do um, have to put the calories on the meal. So at least they're trying. I don't know if they're forced by what the consumer is saying as well, or standards have to follow. Um, but the upsizing thing is definitely an issue uh, and we follow trends as we know from America and things are getting bigger and bigger in cups and, and one thing, a trend which I, young people are doing a lot now is energy drinks. So um, it's good to see young kids drinking water but you see a lot of kids drinking these energy drinks which are full of you know, sugars, full of salt um, and actually drinking them not as like to get an energy boost, actually drinking them as a normal drink. So that's, that's to me that's a real issue. Um, but the fast food thing there, I think one thing we do have now in Australia, which we wouldn't have had 20 years ago, was every corner has a sushi shop now. So sushi's a great quick snack. So there are options there, um, and there are places doing beautiful fresh salads. So there's options there. Um, but then again, um, like you said, every second corner has got a fast food place on there. It's cheap, which is an issue as well. Um, um, but then having said that, to produce a quick snack meal for yourself or a quick cheap dinner for yourself can be very quick and very cheap. Something as simple as a piece of grilled salmon with a beautiful fresh salad is going to cost you nothing to make. It's going to take you 15 minutes, no cleaning, no mess, and it's ready, you know. So it's just about people actually learning about food and just getting a few techniques and getting a few skills. And really, some people are actually scared of cooking, you know. They think it's hard and I don't cook a fish if I ever cook it. And it's only food, just try it. Um, yeah, and so I think there's options there for people if they want to eat healthy. And fast food can do, you can do fast food yourself at home and still make it a lot better than fast food that's available and still do it relatively quick. Oh, I totally agree. And you kind of triggered for me a memory, something that one of our dietitians has talked about was a patient who, um, he was an insulin dependent diabetic who'd never even turned his oven on wow. in his home until he'd had his surgery. So that learning to cook thing, yes. it, it can be quite daunting for people who haven't yes. had that exposure. Yes. Um, and that's where for us involving you and engaging yeah. you in what we're doing with patients, um, I think is so valuable, you know, learning those basic skills and getting people motivated to cook more right. um, and healthier food, you know, as well. So let's just talk a little bit about the landscape of fresh produce in Australia. Yes. Um, I personally believe it's really important to try and support our local farmers Very to buy so. Australian. Yeah. You know, what's happening out there in the world of you know farming and technology and fresh produce in Australia? What does that look like right now? Good, I suppose. If you look at the, the you see a lot more organic food around now, which is fantastic. Uh, and when it first came on the market, it was, it was overpriced. Um, and it was almost ripping off the market. It was almost like when gluten-free products started coming on the market, they were very expensive, they weren't such good quality. But I think now, as the competition grows, we're seeing a lot more beautiful, fresh, organic vegetables around. Um, but we're actually quite lucky in Australia. We have amazing systems, we have amazing, amazing farms, we have amazing water, we have amazing um, cattle, we have all amazing produce. So we're actually, if you go to a supermarket anywhere in the world, and you, you'll see in a lot of them, in North Asian countries, you'll see Australian fruit and vegetables. So the stuff we're getting here is already good. One thing we are spoiled in Australia with, and what we don't do that a lot of 
countries like Greece in Italy do is we don't eat seasonally with our vegetables. So we're used to eating strawberries all year round, we're used to eating tomatoes all year round, whereas in the Mediterranean countries, you eat beautiful tomatoes when they're in season. Um, we, we do, I mean, the asparagus now, you see it in the supermarkets all year round, but really it's a summer vegetable. So it's just coming in season now. Um, but one thing which I think is a positive is that the supermarkets are actually getting smarter now and the quality of the produce in supermarkets is raising all the time. And a good thing, I believe, for uh, somebody who's starting to learn about food, learn about cooking, is spend a lot of time in your supermarket. Just walk around and you'll actually see the areas where they have the seasonal produce. So at the moment, during summer, you've got beautiful stone fruits in season. So when I was a kid, we'd never had fresh stone fruit. It was always tin peaches. But now you can get a beautiful fresh stone fruit, simply grill it, put a little bit of ricotta on top and a little bit of prosciutto or something. Amazing little entree, a nice little, little snack. Are you making me hungry? Oh, yeah, that's simple, right? <laughs> that sounds so good. Yeah. Is it important to buy organic? Have we got, do we really understand what does organic mean and True. why is it important? Um, look, I think now that the way things are regulated in Australia, we have a, an amazing um, system in Australia where the food that we get on the table it's safely from A to B, it's, it's very regulated. So it's getting tougher and tougher for people to use excess chemicals and all that sort of thing. So um, I think it's great to eat organic when you can, um, and it's, but it's also great to support the other farmers as well. And you're safe to eat any food in Australia. That's one thing you're guaranteed about. It's, it's, it's real food, mm -hmm. it's not fake. Um, so it's even with the seafood industry as well, everything is highly regulated. So we're, we're safe. We're, we've got some of the best food, produce and, and water in the world. So. Organic is great if you can do it, it is, but it comes at an extra cost as well. Um, my focus is just to try and use the simple produce that's in season, and it's A, it's cheapest, and it's B, it's also at its best quality when it's in season as well. So it's still safe to go out and purchase fresh, healthy produce, yep. don't necessarily worry about is it organic or not, and we're still on, yeah. we're still doing the best thing we possibly can for our body. 100%, 100%, and it's all in moderation as well. So I think that um, like the organic is great if you can do it, but still just eat fresh. That's, that's good enough. Oh, that word just resonates with yeah. me, moderation. And it's, yeah. I think, you know, when we're talking about food, everything in moderation is Definitely. how I grew up. Yeah. Um, you know, that there's no such thing as bad foods. There's True. only bad eating habits. Yeah. Um, you know, we know how hard it is to break a habit, change a habit, and to make mm. those healthier lifestyle decisions. Yeah. But if we think about food as everything in moderation, that that's probably a healthy approach. Very much so. And for me, that's probably part of my wellness, yeah. I guess, attitude or approach. When, yeah. when you hear the word wellness relating to food, what are some of the things that come to mind for you? Look, I just think it's having a good balance as well and feeling good about the food you eat. So I think if I eat too much you know, unhealthy food, I feel bad, I feel guilty and I just don't feel right. But when I eat some nice, fresh, beautiful food and something I've made myself, it makes me feel even better as well. Um, so I think the wellness part of it now is just about eating smaller portions, about eating more regularly throughout the day, um, and it just makes you feel good. I think that's an important part about it. It's about fueling your body. Very much so, yeah. Um, so let's talk about your journey as a chef, which is just amazing. It spanned three decades of some incredible experiences. Yeah. Um, you know, runner-up as, as Australian Chef of the Year in 2016, um, plus a whole host of accolades that go hand in hand with a, you know, a long and dedicated, passionate career. Mm. Um, Tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the changes in cuisine orientation. So, you know, we've been through, you know, phases of Nouvelle Cuisine True. when that happened. Yep. Talk yep. us through some of those changes that yeah. you've seen in your career as a chef. True. It was actually quite funny. So you mentioned the Nouvelle Cuisine. So that was all about having a big plate the size of this table with all the little dots of food over it, you know, and you sort of ate your dinner and you think, wow, what did I get? What did I eat? You know, uh, and it was all different colours and you didn't know if you were eating a piece of fish or a you know, piece of broccoli or whatever it was. Um, but there's definitely uh, a trend now where that chefs are you trying to use the most simplest produce available. Because it's an interesting thing about it is they do it because it's cheaper for them as well. So it's not just about, it's great looking after the customer and giving them some good, fresh, simple produce, but it's actually cheaper for the chef to produce as well. So in the day, they're running a business, so they can actually make more money of it. And same when you're cooking at home, if you can use the beautiful in-season stuff, then it's, it's fresher as well and it's, yeah. it's cheaper for to use. So I think chefs are getting smarter all the time. They're learning to use um, different proteins, different starches. They don't know about the carbs now, so they're trying to balance their meals better. Um, yeah, so I think they're just getting smarter all the time and learning more about the, what the consumer wants. And the chefs actually do, do drive trends as well. So it's a funny thing, it's about 
you know, getting what the customer wants, but it's also training the customer what they want as well. So when we first started cooking, the chefs in Australia are taught traditional French cuisine. That's what you get trained in school. And that's all about butter, salt, cream, all these heavy things. Every sauce had was, uh, flour and every sauce had butter in it. Um, but now, like, that's almost changed because we're mixing all these beautiful A's and spices and flavours and you don't necessarily have to have a big gravy with everything and you don't necessarily have to have mashed potato with it. You can have some you know, beautiful grain salad or you can have some beautiful lentils or whatever you want to have with the dish. So chefs just learning all the time and it's an ever-evolving thing. So we're getting... Um, the good thing about Australia is maybe a lot of people don't realise that we are actually seen from around the world as, as a food hub, as a foodie, um, foodie country. So people actually do look to us at what we're doing as well. So while we always learn and get trends from other countries and bring the flavors from Thailand and flavors from Korea and flavors from Japan to Australia, people do look to Australia for how we're eating and what we're cooking and what we're serving. So do you think we're evolving that national kind of cuisine? I mean, I know, you know, Australia's mm -hmm. always been looked at as um, you know, we eat meat pies and, and drink beer, you know, from yeah. the, the culinary vision, from the external viewpoint, from the yeah. outside world, yeah. that's what, it, that, that was what we ate True. or that we were driven by more those English kind of, mm. um, you know, thoughts around what yeah. food looked like. So obviously, yeah. you know, the introduction of the multicultural landscapes yeah. changed how we eat. Yes, definitely. Are we evolving an Australian kind of signature Cuisine? Look, no, it's very difficult because people just say to me when I travel overseas, okay, you're from Australia, what's, what is Australian cuisine? What's, what are your favourite, what do you cook? I say, well, a bit of, bit of Italian, a bit of Japanese, a bit of, bit of Thai, a bit of everything. So but that traditional meat and free veg, was, which I grew up with a kid, and you know, the repertoire my father had when he was cooking was two things, or soup or, or sausages and, and mashed potato and peas, and that was all it was, you know. Um, so that's gone. That's, that's long gone now, I think. So, um, and as we get the new waves of immigration, so with the Vietnamese coming during the 70s where they brought some of their stuff, and obviously before that we had the Europeans, and now we've got some Af a lot of African influence in Australia, so there's North African cuisines coming. So you're doing some beautiful spices and flavours and rubs. And those countries, they're, they're all about just simple produce. There's no fancy ingredients there. It's all about basic produce, cooked well and served. Excellent. Another subject that I'm really fascinated about at the moment, and it's quite topical, mm. is the discussion around food waste. Yes. And, um, you know, there's so many different aspects that we can talk about when it comes to food waste. Yeah. But if we can just start with... What does that look like in the in the restaurant industry? Mm. And in the restaurant industry, um, what is actually being done through hospitality venues to actually minimise food waste? What does that actually look like? Yeah, look, um, food waste uh, and organic recycling is really a big, big, um, big ticket item at the moment. So most big companies, it's it's definitely a big agenda item. Where before it was taken as a bit of a yeah, we, we want to try and do something green. We don't know what it is, mm -hmm. um, but now there's pressure getting put on big companies to actually do their fair share. So Australia is quite behind in a lot of other countries around the world. Um, if you even go to a country like Korea, you cannot even put in your home rubbish bin any organic waste. You've got to manage it inside your home, which is amazing, isn't it? Amazing, yeah. how do they do that? Well basically they've got some, a little, um, like a combustion unit inside their kitchen which just dehydrates it and it goes in the garden. So it's crazy, you know, and we don't hear about that in Australia. Um, we do have some technology now which, which is, um, the biggest thing, the problem with um, organic food waste in Australia, there's more than one problem, but the big problem is, A, it's a big waste. And they do say, and I read a report recently that a third of the whole food produced in the world gets wasted. Can you believe it? One that third. It's amazing. And that was from the United Nations. So it was a really interesting report. Um, so, and in the kitchen as well, um, food is money. So we're trying to do as much as we can to reduce the waste. Um, but there are, there will always be waste. And we actually did a waste audit at the place I was working at and ascertained that a big hotel produces between three to 500 kilos of organic waste a day, which is amazing. So it's almost half a ton. And that's table scraps, food left from the buffet, overproduction, because once a food's been served on, on to the public, you can't reserve it because you don't know what's happened to it. Um, so what would happen previously was that would go into a skip bin and then it would go in a truck. So it's creating you know, road miles, uh, miles with a truck, and then it'd go into landfill and that creates greenhouse emissions. Everything just like bad, 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 all ticks for the bad for the environment. Okay. So there had to be a solution there. Um, so what some companies are doing now is they're actually having on-site compost units. So these units will have 100 kilos of organic waste and in 24 hours it'll turn it into um, 15 kilos of um, mulch. 
which can be taken onto a farm, a golf course, which is a great thing, but in, if you're big in the city, where are you gonna store all this sort of stuff? So the solution, um, which a lot of places are using now, is something called an orca unit, which actually is a big machine, like a washing machine, and you put all your food scraps in there, everything goes in there, like coffee grinds, bones, vegetables, cakes, anything. And it basically turns it all into spins, sprays an enzyme in it and turns it into water and it goes down the drain. So it just turns it into, into water, goes straight down the drain and it's actually been tested to make sure that it's actually not putting any pollutants in the drain. Um, so that basically just eliminates trucks on the road, greenhouse emissions, so it's just an amazing thing. That's just awesome. I yeah. think that's fantastic. And I hope one day that yeah. we do adopt some of those systems that are being used in Korea like that. Yeah. Oh, it's look, it's amazing. And as I said, Australia, not, we're not even in the top 20 in the world uh, for sustainability. So I think France is number one. Um, France have actually implemented a law now where guys like the big supermarkets, they must give their lost, um, the leftover stock to these charity organisations who will use that for um, making food for the homeless. They must. There's no like, oh, it's a good thing we want to do it. It's law. Um, and I think Canada's closely behind them as well. We really need to follow that trend. Very much so. And you know, I've seen even in organisations who do support the homeless and are feeding them on the street that yep. they're dependent on a small number of, you know, restaurants or outlets yep. who donate to them, but it's so often high carb, high fat, True. Um, you know, high salt, sugar, whatever, yep. it's poor quality. True. Yet if we had a, a system where we could get our supermarkets and other chain mm. stores behind a solution, yeah. then we're also going to be, you know, not only um, doing the right thing in terms of food waste, but offering to create healthier options for those people. Very much so. And like, so it, it's happening, but I just think we, we are way behind. Like Australia, we're quite a progressive country and we think we're, you know, we're quite ahead in a lot of things, but in a lot of things we're quite behind. So it's only when you do a bit of traveling and do a bit of research that you can actually, see. and it's, it's, you can actually jump on the internet and we're lucky now with the internet, we can learn whatever you want about any subject. Absolutely. And that's how we get better. Is that a subject that's passionate for you that you'd like to sort of see yeah. some outcomes from in Australia for the rest of your career? Very much so. Um, so I, I like training young chefs, but not only about cooking, just about life in general, you know, and about those young kids. They're gonna have kids one day and I've got kids and you know, we're, we're custodians of, of this place. And it's up to us to try and improve a little bit and try and make it better for, for the next generation. Totally agree with you. Um, so in the work that you've done here with us at Weight Loss Solutions Australia, it's been a relationship that you know we absolutely love and have had a couple of years now of working together where you've created recipes for a bariatric patient population and something quite different from the work that you've done previously, yeah. Yeah. but we're talking about teaching adults, yeah. first of all, um, how to create nutritious, um, tasty food. Yeah. We're focusing on portion size, yeah. but also giving back this whole focus on food still being pivotal. And yes. for a bariatric patient before surgery, you know, mm. food has become a big problem. Yeah. And what we want to teach our patients is that yeah. food needs to be fun. It needs to Very be so. um, delicious, yeah. nutritious, yeah. and also still become a big part of life and take mm. away the fear yeah. of what food looks like. And um, so you've been really instrumental in helping yes. us create that opportunity for patients to learn. Yeah. Um, how, I guess, first of all, how have you enjoyed the experience of working with this demographic? It's been amazing, Felicity. I mean, the whole team's great from yourself and all your, your team here, but also the patients, it's just been great. Like everybody wants to have fun. For me, the biggest part about cooking is you have to have fun. It's simple as that. The rest will come after that. So my, my goal is to try and get people to enjoy what they're doing and learn some skills and show them that in a day it's just food. You know what I mean? Just try it. You don't need a lot of massive ingredients to make something nice. Two, three, four, five ingredients done well. Um, and just trying to teach them the basics of what, what chefs learn, how to maximise the most flavour out of certain ingredients. So. Um, the class we did on, on Saturday, um, I only just used uh, probably about a teaspoon of salt. And that was just to give the, the salmon a tiny little bit of seasoning. All the rest of the flavor come from the natural ingredients, the beautiful peas we used, the beautiful lentils we used, um, amazing low fat ricotta dressing with olive oil and fresh lemon juice, just great flavor. Um, and I think all of the dishes had four, five, maybe six ingredients, simple to make as well. So that's what I've been trying to show the guys is just have a go with it. Um, show them how to cook a really a piece of salmon which some people can get scared about cooking a piece of salmon and they think you've got to cook it really well, but just to cook it really lightly and then let it rest 
Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to give her my skills as simple things and show them a bit of fun, funky techniques as well, where we torch the avocado, which is something guys could you know have fun and do with a, with a dinner party at home, or show them a beautiful carrot soup, which they could put in a glass and put a bit of almond yogurt on top and have a little funky cocktail party at home for their friends and show off about the lovely fresh food that they can make. Well, you definitely did the whole big, you know, exposing the whole big rainbow, the carrot soup, the lentils, the avocado, the peas, the yeah. salmon, you know, all of those colourful things that mm. are so important yeah. in a healthy approach to good food and good nutrition in your diet. Yeah. So, so important. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, so we're excited to see that relationship grow over time and to get you back again in the kitchen cooking for our patient population in the future because it's Definitely. so it is so much fun and I totally agree yeah. it's the fun factor is um, is critical. Um, so tell us a little bit about what's what's coming up for Mark Normoyle. What do you see as your future direction for you as a chef? Well, I'm lucky now. I suppose I'm at the stage of my career where I get to work with the people that I want to work with, um, which is great. So I'm having fun doing some, some freelancing and doing some travelling. So I'm currently an ambassador for Wagyu Beef um, region in Japan. So it's an exciting time for Wagyu Beef. Um, we've had Wagyu Beef in Australia, but previously it's, it's Australian bred Wagyu Beef, which has the genes from the Japanese beef. But now we can actually import the fully bred uh, um, Japanese Wagyu beef, which is an amazing product. So I'm doing a bit of work with them. Um, Wagyu farming has got a great history in Japan. So it's a style of farming where they feed the cattle a specific diet and they look after it like a little child um, and it's got beautiful marbling in it. So, but that's a sort of a thing where we used to have big steaks in Australia. In Japan, they'd eat maybe 60 or 70 grams of beef. That's probably why they're all so slim and, and have, have you know, great diets over there. So I'm working some in Japan. I've done some stuff around Australia as well. I'm currently the national executive chef for a big dairy company. So that's exciting as well. So once again, I'm working there. They want me to use their dairy products. How can we make fresh, healthy, nutritious uh, food? Because dairy gets a bit of a bad run sometimes. But the good thing about um, butter, which I'm happy to see now, is the trend has come back to using fresh butter in a lot, which is great. So margarine had a big spread there during the 80s. Now it's almost gone. So butter is a beautiful product and in moderation again, great thing to use. So I'm just having fun, cooking, enjoying my life. That's moderation great. again, it's the critical word. Yeah. Um, okay, so the name of this podcast is Wellness Warriors. Mm. Um, tell us a little bit about your view on wellness as a whole and what does that look like for you, for your family? Yeah. How would you describe the values of wellness for you? Um, look, I suppose uh, physical and mental as well is, is really important. Um, so I've worked in an industry which, you know, it's a lot of stress as well. So um, for me, to me, wellness is just about being content in what we do, in life in general, getting to a stage where you just enjoy life. That's the most important thing. And, and by having a, a decent diet, by looking after yourself, um, keep being motivated, hanging around with the right sort of people and interacting with you know, all my friends and colleagues and family. To me, that's, that's wellness. It's a big, big picture. So, and obviously food's a big part of that. We like to eat out a lot in Australia. Um, that's one thing I do like about the Europeans where they eat together. So Absolutely. to me, that, and that's why you're a big happy family. So that's what it's all about for me. And that's something that I really take away as well when we're doing these cooking classes for our patients, that it's re-establishing that core value of eating around a dining table yeah. as a family. To me, that was part of my yes, childhood. Very much and so. I'm just trying to get people back into that whole concept of sitting around a table without the technology, with no television, yeah. with no phones. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a big part of my childhood that I've also made part of my own family life. And yeah. even now with children in their 20s, it's still something that's so, so important to me. Is, yeah. um, and if we can kind of, I guess, impart that and make that more approachable, realistic and yeah. easy to handle for patients to where life kind of has, mm. the overwhelm sometimes gets in the way. Coming yeah, back to so. core values, I think is so. Look, we're, we're, everyone's got a busy life now, so we're busy yeah. and we've, you know, we've got targets. And we've got to do this. And we've got to do that. And we just forget to just to chill and just yeah. to just to relax and take time to have a chat to your kids, have a chat to your partner, just to share a simple meal together. And once again, it doesn't have to take you four hours to make it on a Saturday afternoon. It could take you twenty minutes, and it's actually fun if you look at it as actually fun going to the supermarket and looking for some fun new produce that you may never have cooked before. You just Google it. How do I? cook a courgette, how do I cook a um, zucchini flour, that sort of thing. It's actually quite fun, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've absolutely loved having you involved with the food journey for Weight Loss Solutions Australia and for our patient population. I think it's just fantastic and I'm really, really looking forward to the next phase and next year. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on our Wellness Warrior podcast. Thank you. 
And thank you so much for joining me today, Mark. Pleasure, Felicity. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure as well. So it's been a joy. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for joining the Wellness Warriors podcast. It's been a pleasure to have you online with us. If you've enjoyed the series, please leave your review, subscribe and follow, and we look forward to sharing many more stories with you in the future.